All right, we will go ahead and begin the Community Development and Renewal Agency of Harriman City uh, meeting for Wednesday, November 10th. Um, we will start with uh, item 2.1, discussion and consideration of a resolution authorizing the extension of collection of tax increments for an additional two years in the Harriman Innovation District Community Reinvestment Area due to the COVID-19 emergency. Alan. Thank you. All four of these resolutions for the uh, CRA is, uh, are related to the same thing. The state has passed a, a, a law that allows for CDAs to be extended an extra two years because of uh, construction restrictions that happened because of the pandemic. So we are applying for the, doing the resolution to extend each one of our four collection areas an additional two years. Uh, so this is the Harriman Town Center, Harriman Business Center, Anthem uh, Town Center, and the Innovative Dish District. So these resolutions would then be passed on to all of our interlocal agencies and the city, the county auditor and the state auditor to make them official, so. Uh, okay, any questions by this body in regards to this? I'll accept a motion. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number R2021-04, authorizing the extension of clocks, excuse me, of collection of tax increment for an additional two years in the Harriman Innovation District Community Reinvestment Area due to the COVID-19 emergency. Second. A motion and second. Jared? Yes. Clint? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'll vote yes, that motion passes. 2.2 discussion and consideration of a resolution authorizing the extension of a collection of the tax increment for an additional two years in the Anthem Town Center community development area due to the COVID-19 emergency. Unless there's f no further discussion as our staff already spoke to that one, I will be happy to accept a motion on that item. Motion to approve resolution number R2021-05, authorizing the extension of collection of tax increment for an additional two years in the Anthem Town Center community development area due to the COVID-19 emergency. Second. I have a motion a second. Clint? Yes. Steve? Yes. Jared? Yes. I will vote yes. That motion passes. Item 2.3, discussion consideration of resolution authorizing the extension of the collection of the tax increment for an additional two years in the Harriman Town Center community development area due to the COVID-19 emergency. I'll accept a motion. Motion to approve resolution number R2021-06 authorizing the extension of collection of tax increment for an additional two years in the Harriman Town Center community development area due to the COVID-19 emergency. Second. A motion a second. Steve? Yes. Jared? Yes. Clint? Yes. And I'll vote yes. That motion passes. We'll move on to item 2.4. Discussion and consideration of a resolution authorizing the extension of the collection of tax increment for an additional two years in the Harriman Business Center community development area due to the COVID-19 emergency. I'll, if there's no further discussion, I'll accept a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve resolution number R2021-07, authorizing the extension of collection of tax increment for an additional two years in the Harriman Business Center community development area due to the COVID-19 emergency. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Jared? Yes. Clint? Yes. Steve? Yes. I will vote yes. That motion passes. That brings us to the end of that meeting. I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn the Community Development and Renewal Agency of Harriman City meeting. Second. We have, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye, we are adjourned. We are still seven minutes ahead of schedule, so at this point we will need to wait for seven minutes until we can begin our general meeting as we have noticed that for 7 p.m. So we'll just hang out for just a minute and uh, start in about seven minutes.
Almost. All right, we'll get started here in just a moment. She's waiting. She knows better. All right. Uh, I'd like to welcome you out to our Harriman City Council General uh, meeting for uh, Wednesday, November 10th, 2021. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance that will be led for us by Teddy Hodges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We will move on to item 4.2, which is city council comments and recognitions. <clears throat> I have none. Okay, seeing none, we will move forward. Uh, just so that the uh, public is aware, um, Councilwoman Orn uh, was attending another meeting on behalf of the city. She is on her way and she will join us shortly. Uh, we will move on to item five, uh, the public co comment portion of our meeting. Audience members may bring any item to the city council's attention. Comments will be limited to two minutes. State law prohibits the council from acting on items that do not appear on the agenda. Public comments for this meeting will also be conducted electronically. Any person in, interested in addressing council may submit a comment by emailing recorder at harriman.org or by visiting harriman.org slash agenda in minutes, where there is a link to fill out the online public form. Your statement will be incorporated into the public record. Um, it does not look like we have received any forms. It does, so give me just one minute. Okay, we will start with um, the first form that we have, which is from Chris Martinson. Chris, if you'd like to come to the podium, please. Hey, how you doing? Um, it's Chris Martinson, and uh, I live in Harriman. I'm with Voice for the Voiceless Life. Um, after our last email that I got from from you guys, I think it's important that we revisit the the Constitution, which was was given to me. Uh, during our that email, so Article Six, Paragraph Five, or I'm sorry, Article Six, Paragraph Two of the U.S. Constitution, commonly referred to as the Supremacy Clause, its purpose is to establish the federal Constitution take precedence over the state laws and state constitutions. It prohibits the states from interfering with the federal government's exercise of its constitutional powers. This Constitution shall be made in pursuance thereof shall be the supreme law of the land. If the federal government takes, uh, makes a law that is not in pursuance with the Constitution, it is not the supreme law of the land. Abortion is not in the Constitution, neither express nor implied, which means it is constitutional to abolish abortion. Article 10 says that we may abolish it as a state. Article 14 says that we must abolish it um, and establish equal protection. So Roe versus Wade, it's not the law of the land. And so when you say that you must follow um, an opinion of the court, then you're advocating lawlessness. The most constitutional thing we can do is ignore Roe, and this city needs to recognize that. The city, the state, using a penumbra to justify the killing of 3,000 babies a year. I want you guys to discuss with me in a work session why saving the lives of these babies are important, and I don't want you to ignore me. I want you to ignore Roe. Thanks. Thank you. The next uh, form that I have is from uh, Kenny Alton, I believe. Mayor, City Council, thank you. I uh, want to talk about uh, 8.2 that you have on the agenda. I um, want to make sure that you all received a copy of my email this last week, had a chance to read it and go through it and so forth. Um, were you able to 
take a trip and walk down the horse trail. We will be happy to discuss that during that item. So now would be an inappropriate time for us to have that discussion. So we will Okay, have... I just wanted to know if you had time to walk the trail is all. Um, so you received it, that's good. Did you also receive the pictures I sent on Sunday as well of the trail? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, if you do release the trail, um, I want to know how that process works as well. Maybe we can talk about that when we get to that point. Also, if you don't release the trail, what is the maintenance program? What are your plans to maintain it? Uh, what are your plans to uh, bring the safety of the residents um, that have young kids, uh, pools, stuff like that to their yards? Um, some of them were told they could not construct um, fences, safety security fences uh, to protect their privacy. So I wanna know what the plan would be moving forward. Um, also, what the budget would be set for to take care of that uh, trail and bring it to useful conditions. And also the communication to the property owners that hasn't been done in the last 16 years on the maintenance, the plan, the schedule, and the future plans for that trail as well. So I, I hope that would be part of the discussion. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, that brings me to the end of the comment forms, which I have. If there's any other individual that would like to speak at this time, please come to the podium and state your name. Hello, my name is Arthur Wheeler. I am a representative for the Sky Ridge Owners Association, which is a 221-unit uh, townhome community up in Rosecrest. Um, I was, we've been working with your city staff to get approval for a uh, deed restriction for a tract of land. I understand you guys last discussed this back on August 27th in a work meeting. And um, your staff has just told me that adequate direction was not given um, to them from the city council. Um, we were told that we were going to be on the agenda for this meeting, but I told that our item was bumped till December 8th. Um, when I informed the HOA board of this, as well as some of the affected homeowners, there was obviously a level of frustration. Um, and so my purpose in being here tonight is just to encourage you guys to give the, the matter some priority, understanding that there is a real parking issue in this community that needs to be addressed. Um, I have a photograph here of the tract of land. I just want to kind of bring up you go, If you'd hand it to one of our officers, please. As you can see, the tract of land, um, it was originally owned by the Rosecrest Homeowners Association. It was brought, um, it was uh, conveyed over to the city as part of an open space agreement. Even without this tract of land, it still meets the necessary open space requirements. Um, as you guys have been previously informed by your staff, the tract of land has no use um, to the city. The HOA has all of the funding to, um, to develop the piece of land use it as 22 additional parking spaces and landscaping. So again, my point, uh, plea to you guys tonight is just to give it priority and make sure it comes up in your next meeting. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. My name's Lynn Egbert. I live in Old Town Harriman. I've lived here since I married into town in 77. Um, I attended a planning meeting uh, last Thursday and I was appalled to find out that the city has a proposal to make uh, all of Harriman have CCNRs for buildings, uh, outbuildings, sheds, shops, something in the backyard. They want to make everything uh, the same as a front house, okay? So, uh, so the front of the building and back would have to match that. That's very common in, in uh, subdivisions where CCNRs are there. I think that's appalling for the fact that, uh, just a short story, a, a lady that served on the planning commission for years, when they moved into town in the late 70s, they built a passive solar house. The, the population here, the old timers said, God, what kind of hippies are moving in here? But did anybody stop them? No, they had their free agency. They could 
they could have put up a yurt if they wanted to, and, and people would have laughed at it, but it was their ground. I think that's appalling that you want to make uh, regular Old Town Harriman, the other places that aren't in a dedicated s subdivision, comply with those rules. Um, thank you for your service. Uh, I've been, before the city was incorporated, I served on the community council. A lot of long hours, boring meetings. Thank you for your service. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, seeing no further, we will close the public comment portion of our meeting. We move on to item six, city council board and committee reports. I'll, I have one quick item. Um, the uh, South, Valley, South Valley Sewer District uh, Board met yesterday in a budget work session and have scheduled their uh, budget hearing for November the 23rd at 6 p.m. Uh, so just wanted to make sure that that was known as we fall within that uh, sewer district, uh, but happy to report um, that uh, their, their finances are honestly, one, they are, they will be completely out of debt, uh, and that includes the um, the new build of the new facility down there within five years, and all of the money that they are putting aside for a current slip lining project and all of those um, comes from the impact fees collected from the year before, so there's no new debt going into it. So they are on, on track, obviously, to uh, be able to not only pay off their current debt, but start uh, setting aside money for the expansion and doubling of that site and that facility as that need warrants. Uh, but it's a very well run uh, organization, uh, great leadership down there. Uh, but again, for anyone is interested, their budget hearing will be the 23rd at 6 p.m. All right. Uh, just, just one quick update from the uh, Mosquito Abatement District. I owe two things. Number one is um, we're reviewing the budget for next year. Um, the board had made a vote to increase the salary of the director, there's a range, and the, the board had said, we want to max out the range. And the director said, I'm uncomfortable with that. I want to keep this same um, cost of living increase that would keep me under that number. And I just thought that was a great thing to report to the public, that we have people at all levels of government who are trying to be responsible stewards of taxpayer money. And I, I just really appreciated that, that gesture there. So um, second thing is, is Interesting um, that uh, two years ago, our West Nile virus testing um, in the traps that they go, they collect and they test for the virus. Um, two years ago, it was at 4%. This last year, it was a 7% positivity rate. So um, I think luckily, even though the, the rate was higher, populations were a little bit down because it was so dry <laughs> of, of the the West Nile, um, the mosquito that transmits the West Nile virus. So we, we kind of dodged a little bit of a bullet this year, but it isn't going away, it's still out there. Um, and that there was some research reported recently that suggests it may peak on a 10 to 11 year cycle. And so um, we, we may not see another peak here for a few more years and then see it come back up. But I thought it was just very interesting information, thought I'd pass along. All right, thank you very much. We will move on to item seven, which is our consent agenda. I'll accept a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as written. I'll second. A motion a second, Jared? Yes. Clint? Yes. Steve? Yes. I'll vote yes, that motion passes. Item 8.1, discussion and consideration of approval for a reimbursement agreement with Ivory Development LLC and Perry Development LLC for infrastructure improvements in the Hidden Oaks development. Blake. Okay, <clears throat> so this is an item we've discussed in work meeting a few times. Um, just go through the presentation really quick. This is the vicinity map. <clears throat> this item is to discuss how we're going to get the infrastructure constructed uh, to support the new elementary school in the Hidden Oaks subdivision. This is the location of where the new elementary school is currently being constructed. And if you drive out there, you can see the structure up in, up in the field. Um, with dirt roads and construction fence around it, but no permanent infrastructure there yet. So the reason we're talking about this, there were 
several meetings with the city to um, locate the school with the school district, the city and the school district, to locate the school at this location. Um, the, city, the school district had, had funds to build a, an elementary school and they were looking at several locations in Harriman and uh, it came down to two locations and this was the most desirable one for, for the city and the school district was amenable to that. But they were struggling to, to determine how to construct the infrastructure at that location. Um, <clears throat> in response, the city wrote a letter to the school district um, discussing how they could work with the neighboring development to ensure these um, infrastructure improvements were installed. There was a lapse in time, a little bit due to COVID and, and some other things, the school district trying to get their designs completed. Uh, so then we wrote a second letter to cl more or further clarify the um, timing and scope. And then there was an MOU that was written after that, um, even, even further clarifying uh, what infrastructure items the, the city was willing to, to assist in, in ensuring they were um, to the school. <clears throat> so this map shows the general idea of what's happening. So the key roads being constructed underneath this reimbursement agreement would be Danzy Boulevard that is shown in purple on the screen. And then the way these are colored is the way the bid came in from the contractor to Ivory and Perry development. And then the other three sections of Silver Sky. These, these roads were shown in the Hidden Oaks Master Development Agreement as capital facility roads that would be reimbursable with impact fees. So they were going to get built at some point in the development, um, but with the school coming in, they required these roads to be built prior to when the developer was planning on building these, these roads and these utilities, which is why we're bringing this agreement to you separate from the other ones tonight, because this, this, set, this reimbursement agreement is structured a little bit differently than most reimbursement agreements. And we'll get to that in a second. So the key roads are Danzy Boulevard and Silver Sky as it's shown here. The key utilities that are part of this, this project are the power. The power going to the school requires three phase power. The rest of the subdivision is single phase power. So, so three phase um, just has more capacity to service some of the equipment they'll have in the school. There's no other school in the district that is serviced with anything but three phase power. We asked the question to see, can we do single phase? And, that was not allowed. Um, <clears throat> sewer will also be required for the school, and the sewer actually runs down Silver Sky. There's no sewer in Danzy Boulevard. And uh, there will be a separate item tonight we'll talk about with the sewer, and, and that will be reimbursed to the city by the sewer district, but we'll have to front the cost up, um, to reimburse Perry and Ivory, and then re receive that reimbursement from the sewer district afterwards and water improvements um, to service the school with water is, are also required. Additionally, there's a trail that runs along Danzy Boulevard, along the west side of Danzy Boulevard, and then crosses and uh, runs along the north side of Silver Sky Drive. That trail is in lieu of a, well, it, instead of a sidewalk, there's a trail along that, and that will be park impact fees for that trail, and that'll, that'll provide access for safe walking and for general recreation when it's not being used by kids walking to school. So the key points out of this reimbursement agreement, I said it's a little bit different. Since it's being built out of phase, the, the concept here is that the city will reimburse um, the developer as the project is completed in, in whole for every one of these improvements. And then if you look at the estimate that was in the staff report, there is about a, a little bit over a million dollars that is considered part of the project that would be required for the development. And so when Perry or Ivory develop any of the lots in pod 10 or pod 11 as shown on the screen, they will pay that money back to the city. So it's kind of a reverse of what we would normally do. Normally we would pay back on impact fees collected. We're gonna pay back with everything and then we're gonna get money back to re replenish general fund that was spent on this. And then, <clears throat> um, like I said, South Valley Sewer, they have a, an item that's on our agenda tonight. We have an item on our agenda tonight that's gonna go to their board in their next meeting, 
where they'll reimburse for the sewer improvements that are going into this because they're, they're considered a system improvement that will service Olympia and this development. And so we will front, the city will front the cost for the sewer improvements and then the sewer district will pay the city back. So that puts us made whole on the project improvements and on the sewer improvements. Um, <clears throat> the, the last one is power. And so the power, there's, there's no real way to re recoup the costs on that um, until possibly the school district builds a school in Olympia or something needs three-phase power in Olympia, then we could possibly recoup it then. But on the item that's on the agenda tonight for the power, if you look, when we spoke with the power company, um, they're only charging $800. They're gonna use um, their revenue sources to pay for the power equipment. Um, but in the infrastructure that's going in with the developer, they're going to put the conduits in the ground for the power. And so it's, I uh, can't remember how much it was, it's like $40,000 that the city, that there's no way that I can see to recoup those costs. So that'll be general fund dollars that we're committed to spend per these discussions and agreements that we'd had with the school district. Um, and that summarizes this reimbursement agreement with Hidden Oaks and allows the city to uphold their <coughs> discussions and agreements that were with the school district and the, and the developer. Are there any questions for me at this time? I have a question. Um, why is pod six not included in the, reimburs the reimbursement part? It's just as connected to Downsy Boulevard and pod 12 kind of is too. So uh, why are they not included in the, <clears throat> in the reimbursement part? So. See, it says the developer to reimburse Harriman the project costs when either pod 10 or 11 develop, but pod six is very much connected to Danzy. So they'll pay the whole cost when any one of those goes. Oh, it's not so just six exclusive it's not to just 10 those. or 11. So okay. it's the whole cost. Okay. And so when we discussed with the developer, they were amenable to, okay, if we pull a permit, or if we want to record a plat in pod 10 or pod 11, before they record that plat, Plat, they'll pay the entire project cost to the city because that's when they okay. would have been required to build all of that road. All right, perfect. Thank you. So uh, it's tied to those because that's when the requirement of the road comes in. In whole, everything. In whole. Yep. Um, on the the three phase power component of that, would there, knowing that there's a future site for a junior high also out in this area, would there be a time where, I guess there might be some opportunity for repayment back to the city because of the three-phase power that the... Mm -hmm. there's, there's a possibility for that. Um, we'd have to look at legal, because that would be a separate agreement with a different entity. So that's right. something we could definitely pursue. Like a pioneering, like a pioneering type of thing or something. Mm -hmm. And it would be for recouping costs, like I said, on the, the conduit and the concrete vaults that are in the ground, right. because the power company pretty much took on the cost in their revenues yeah. for for the, the equipment and the wire. Yeah. I was just building on the, you, <clears throat> you know, your comment of if there's something else that needs that three-phase power in the future, and you mentioned Olympia, but there also is, again, another school site here that certainly will require that down the road at some point as well. That's exactly right. Okay. <clears throat> My only question is kind of the, the same one I always have with these agreements is, are we agreeing to pay more than we would otherwise? Right, or so are we agreeing to pay the total cost, whatever it happens to be, or are we agreeing to pay the cost of what we collect and, and those impact fees? Because the two, a lot of times, don't match up. Substantially. So this, everything that's included as the system cost that we wouldn't get back as the project cost is the same either way. And the water, everything should be recouped. We've always known that the roads struggle to generate enough to pay for this. Um, with the recent bond that we did for the whole Hidden Oaks project, it's helped us offset that. So we, we come a lot closer to being made entirely whole with the transportation impact fee. If we can be successful in receiving funding for 7300 West, looking at the project itself, um, it, it becomes really close to being penciling out financially for the transportation. But then if you look at citywide, there are some developments that, that don't have a capital road that they pay in the impact fees. And so they, that's generally the idea they'll help offset that. But 
It's I a, just am always uneasy analysis. with the kind of, to me, open-ended language we're going to reimburse for however much it costs mm -hmm. when we know we can't, we have a finite amount we can collect. Yeah. We, we're comfortable with the parks, water, and storm, well, in storm drain, there's no reimbursement in that, but they are paying in the storm drain impact fee because that covers storm drain improvements elsewhere in the city. That's just the way the impact fees are structured. Yeah, this, um, I mean, this, the sewer makes sense. The, the million from the developer on 10 and 11 makes sense. The power makes sense. That leaves two and a half million, you know, estimated that we're fronting and then we're going to try to collect from the impact fees. Mm -hmm. I just, it's just that I'm, I'm just making a blanket back. statement that in these, these agreements where we don't say that it's limited to what we collect in impact fees from that area makes me a little nervous. So since impact fees work in buckets, we'd have to break that down into buckets. And I, I think I did that in the staff report. I, I had a table that showed that, and I think that might be part of Alan's budget amendment presentation. But as you break it into buckets, um, water will definitely be made whole in this project. And parks will definitely be made whole in this project. Transportation for the entire Hidden Oaks project generates about 1.7 million. So if you were just taking in a vacuum this road and the entire Hidden Oaks project, you would be made whole for transportation. I, but I totally <laughs> understand the estimates and whatnot. It's more of a, more looking to the attorney. Why, why do we continue to have the open-ended language in these has kind of been an so ongoing thing. This one in particular, there's not a blank check on this one, right? There is a, it's, in a, it's a fixed amount, particularly with this one. The other reimbursement agreements that we're now negotiating and working on do you have a not to exceed amount as well going forward? That's something that we've identified. I know since I've been here, that was a problem with previous reimbursement agreements. So that is something we're curing moving forward. But with this one in particular, there's, it's not that we don't have a not to exceed amount, it's just that we have fixed numbers that were. Yeah. So I, I think that answers your question. It's not a blank slate for them yeah. to come in and say, pay us this amount. Well, and again, right. this one's a little bit reversed from what we normally do right. because we're up, that slightly different. We're, we're up fronting the costs and then getting reimbursed the project cost once, again, we, they go to develop in that area. Mm -hmm. the, right. the fixed amount is what I think. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And part of that's important to note that it's because we agreed to do that a long time ago w with the school district the school because district. we wanted this school to be located in uh, the area it's located to service the, the kids in our community so our community kids didn't have to be bused a long ways away. So we felt like it was the infrastructure that was needed to provide for the children that continue to come to our community. No, I'll just echo what Sherry said is, again, making sure we have the right language in the agreements is obviously essential for the protection, but the main thing is here is, is that this is something we agreed to a long time ago to, in fact, ensure that this school would be built on the time frame that it was built to be available to keep from having to do those busing and other things. So. There's, there's a lot of moving pieces that now need, are all coming together, again, with appropriate language to make sure that we're protected on the backside. And just highlighting something Blake said that I think adds a little clarity here is, is that the net cost of general fund dollars, whether it's traditional, they would pay it and we'd reimburse them, or we do it and get reimbursement, it's the same it's the calculation. Same. The only difference is this is we're accelerating the time frame, so we're paying for it up front to make sure that the school gets built. But so it is it, it's, fixed it's not a dollar it's not amount, it's a timing thing, right? right. Yeah. I, I wanna add on just cause I wanna add on, but I got nothing to add on, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate that we're working forward to getting more schools in our community as obviously our growth dictates that we need them. Ready for a motion? I am ready for a motion. I'll be happy to make a motion to approve resolution number R32-2021, approving a reimbursement agreement with Ivory Development for certain improvements within the Hidden Oaks development. Second. Motion and a second, Sherry? Yes. Steve? Yes. Jared? Yes. Clint? Yes. I'll vote yes, that motion passes. We will move on to item 8.2, discussion and consideration of a resolution to vacate a horse trail easement in the uh, Hamilton Farm subdivision. Blake. Okay. Wait for this presentation to come up. Uh, we spoke about this a few weeks ago, and uh, there was a public hearing held at that time. Public hearing was gathered and closed, and in public comment, we heard that there were some emails that were um, sent to me over the weekend and over last week, and everything was gathered together, provided to the council regarding photos of this horse trail easement and some, some other information. So general location of this is shown on the map near 6400 West, and 
uh, 13600 South. This image shows the plat where the trail was created. It was created in 2002. Uh, looking back through the Planning Commission notes and and uh, all the information that we have in the in the file on this project, the original subdivision plans submitted by the developer when they were going through the pre-approval process did not show this trail. You can see where it was discussed by the Planning Commission the night that it was approved. So it seems like it was added on as a do that as a requirement exaction out of the developer. Um, and it was added on as an easement on the back of these lots and then down the side of a couple of other lots. The trail actually extends to the east further than you can see on this map. Um, if you were to take the little short segment of yellow and extend it across the street between lots two and one, it goes between those lots and ties into an existing trail that is actually dedicated to the city and dedicated open space. Um, <clears throat> and then looking through all the information, there's, there's no specific agreement about maintenance or, or any other aspect like that for this trail. All there is is the plat that says horse trail easement on it. It actually doesn't signify who the easement is in favor of. It just says horse trail easement. May I ask uh, just a question just to verify my understanding? This particular motion would vacate the easement on the yellow portion in that but not the portion that extends between lot one and two, one and two correct? That's, uh, that's what's being proposed here. Council's free to okay, just, modify just, and change it, but yes, you're uh, correct. Just verifying that is what is current proposed. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. <clears throat> um, as you can see, the, the, re the request from this um, came from one of the residents in the area, and that resident went out and collected signatures from neighbors, and you can see on the map the blue lots are um, yes, in favor of vacation. The yellow lot um, on the form that is a little blurred out, some of the personal information is uh, redacted there, that that one said no against the vacation. Um, and so that, that map gives a good visualization of who is and who isn't in favor. That's flipped. Right? It's flipped from the last map. So the horse trail would run along the um, north is to the right on this map. So it would be along the west side of the lots, <clears throat> closer to Rose Canyon Road. So between the blue lots that are highlighted. And so that's, that just kind of shows who's in favor and who's of, of vacating it. And then you can see on the aerial image how the, the city has grown in this area over since 2005 and then 2020. And uh, there were, was probably more equestrian use in 2005 and likely less now with the, the development and the types of subdivisions that have gone in in this area and the, the opportunity to actually you know, have horses on, on the lots. But the lots that are adjacent to this, their use hasn't changed. There's still, Not no, the there's ones been adjacent. no development al along this trail. These lots, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, there's been, I mean, the subdivision yeah. was designed for large animal use. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. and continues to support that, continues to have that available to them. Yes. Correct. Nothing yeah. more trees, though. <laughs> so, yeah, with that, um, it was just kind of a rehash of the, this information from the, the last time this, this body um, heard this item. So happy to answer any questions that you might have at this time. It seemed like there was several questions in the emails about the legality of all this. Have you looked into that, Chase? Can you give us a brief update on that? So in terms of vacating the easement, there, there's no issue in doing that. Um, the, the, it seemed like sorry, they were questioning the, whether or not we had the easement the, legally. The easement, in my opinion, is valid because it was recorded with the plat. Um, I, so also, the, there was, in that comment, there was a, a, a accusation made that uh, the city was in breach of contract. Was any contract provided to us that would indicate that we were in breach of said contract? Not that we can find, no. Again, so this was this was simply recorded um, with the plat. It doesn't define the scope of the easement, right? Um, doesn't define the term or any of the other general conditions you might see with another written document that, that formalizes an easement. However, this is a valid form of recording 
uh, an easement of this type by doing it through plat. And it was done by the property owner prior to these, these lots being sold, correct? Yeah. Like Blake indicated, it was part of, uh, it appears to have been part of Planning Commission's conditions of approval. So when the homeowners came in and bought these homes, they would have, this would have been recorded on the plat when they went to purchase their homes, correct? Yes. And that's why the, the fencing that was installed on the rear of these lots that were being developed and sold was installed where it was to create that, that easement. Thoughts, discussion? Well, the comment was made that people are not allowed to put up fences on one side of it. Is that correct? No, this is private property, so they can do anything that they would like with the private property that does not interfere with the scope of that easement, with the so use of that they easement. They can't block the easement. Correct. So they could not put up a fence that would prevent somebody from accessing that easement. Correct. But they can put, they up can put a fence, fence up to the easement, correct? Right. Correct. It's just, I understand it's difficult. I know the property owners, and but tomorrow some of the property owners could change, and I hate walking away from something that was designed specifically for these purposes and vacating an easement because although I understand that there's been development, this subdivision was designed for this type of use. And if we're gonna talk in our general plan trying to preserve some of the things, and, and then why would we walk away from it you know, give up an easement that would allow those types of uses. Now, if there's an issue with the way that we're, we're maintaining it or things like that, then then we need to address that and, and look into, you know, if it's not being properly maintained or things like that, we need to do our part on that, I believe. I don't know the case, you know, what is it isn't happening there. I just know that if, you know, if there's an issue with that, we should address that. I know there's always uh, you know, pri there was mention of privacy issue, and I understand that, and I can sympathize that with that. But again, when the, when the property was purchased, it was should have been made very clear. It was part of your purchasing documents that there's an easement that goes behind there, and it looks like from the pictures you can tell that there's a pathway there. That everyone's fence is up to the pathway, so I can tell you that just in my own neighborhood, this is what we're desperately missing because there wasn't any development that allowed any connectivity. If this trail went to nowhere and it didn't connect to another trail of any sorts, then it would be like, okay, it's just, you can't ride up and down, if, you know, the, the trail right there. But if there's connectivity into other trails, then it makes it more valuable to, to keep it that way. What do you guys think? I'll just comment to, to, to the point, one of the points you brought up, Sherry, and that is, is I think one of the, the items that has really kind of prompted and created the issue to be brought forward was the lack of maintenance. Yeah. Um, and I can understand the, fr the frustration that exists there. Uh, if this exists back there and there's a lack of maintenance and it seems that there is, again, no use for it or no desired use for it. And uh, clearly uh, with the, the information that we've received, it was, um, pointed out in Blake's presentation that there, there clearly was no defined maintenance agreement for that area. That's something that we can certainly address and should address in terms of the maintenance and make that, um, again, should it remain in place, a more usable and inviting space for people to, to be able to use, which I think would happen, again, if that was taken place. To your other point, Sherry, I agree. I think that, uh, you know, we've, we've, We've tried hard, especially in areas that have some of these um, uh, rights that go along with the property, uh, including those that uh, are in this area and along 6400 West, to give them an avenue. Um, again, whether people actually have animals or not, I live on property myself that has animal rights to it. I currently don't have any animals, but my neighbors on both sides of me do, and, uh, and we have a, a trail access right behind us for this exact same purpose. Now, I don't use it to access for, because I don't currently have them, but it doesn't mean I think that it should just go away. And I think that, uh, again, there was, uh, again, it was put in place for a reason, and and once it's gone, it's gone. We can't get it back at that point. And for me to, to, to give it up, um, I think there's some issues that have been identified that we certainly need to address and can address to make this better, uh, but to just uh, vacate the easement so that this no longer exists in there would for me probably be kind of difficult at this point. I also believe that it's, this isn't just a, 
And I appreciate that he's went to his neighbors and, and, and figured out who along there would want it or who wouldn't want it. But this isn't a neighborhood trail. This is a s city easement. So anybody could ride from here all the way down to here, some connectivity in the trail. So it's not just simply that neighborhood's amenity. It's a trail system that connects through the city. I think that's a great point, Sherry, because again, I live um, just basically on the east side of this this development, I actually have the the city owned arena at the end of my street. Yeah. Um, again, I don't currently have uh, horses, um, but this this place over here again, should somebody over there decide to have horses and large animals, they have that connectivity on that path all the way across to where that arena is at the end of my street to be able to access that and not have to force them onto any of the surface streets to, to get there. And, and I think that's what was intended to be created at the time to, to create that connectivity to those other amenities um, that were either planned or already existing. Just, uh, just for argument's sake. Sure. Um, other than the, the residents directly adjacent to this trail, are there anybody from outside the area that would have a compelling reason to use this trail to get connectivity to the rest of the equestrian trails? That's, that's the thing is, I know you, were, you, you made the comment that this is a, you know, a city trail, mm -hmm. but the, the, the big equestrian trail is behind the other houses and that's the one that connects to everything. This little side piece that brings over there is is primarily a function to allow these homes right along there. The, the, there's actually a lot of equestrian trail that connects to that. Yeah, yeah there's quite yeah, a bit. And, and I, mean, I guess I guess back to my previous point is the, this specific part. It doesn't mean connects. these homeowners will be there forever either. And so if you vacate it, if someone moves in and they want to use it, yeah, that's I, that's exactly my point. All of that is the rest of the trail. Right, but anybody coming from over here would, could come down here and connect, or they could come down here and connect, right? The, uh, 13475 South, or uh, what is that, 137, 600 South, right? Uh, that all, those people would all go down one of those streets instead of coming, turning, going all the way down the middle in between all those houses to come over. So, uh, Steve, and, and uh, it's yeah, just a, I understand yeah. kind, of, kind of your point, right? That so, if it, it's just this little appendage over here that maybe isn't needed, yeah, that, that, like, can you I'm not necessarily that? arguing that. I'm just uh, well, I am arguing that, kind, but kind I'm arguing it for just discussion lots. purposes, right? right. right? Just yeah. no, I think I think that's an absolutely uh, uh, valid. My my response to that would be, John, John, can we pull up the yellow and blue lots, please? Until very recently, I've had very large dogs for 20 <laughs> years, right? And we go, we go on walks and runs every single day. And if I don't vary that, uh, the path that we take is very monotonous and very, right, short. So we, they get really excited when we take, are able to take a varying route. And especially with larger animals, sure. it's, way. it's way. very, very, at least I think from the owner point that of view, one. it's very important to do that. Right, so it might not, it might be an appendage, but it's a good side run if you're doing that all the time. So, uh, so for argument's sake, I mean, sure, yeah, there's, yeah, I think there's that utility. So my side. my bigger concern, and, and so I actually agree, Sherry, I agree with the once we have a trail with with Clint, once we have a trail, we shouldn't give it up. I see, yes, I see one person in here that says no, they're against the vacation. What I don't see is I don't see a response from the people on the other side of that property, even though it's not technically on their easement, I'm sure they have access to that. They have access. Anecdotally from um, our meeting a couple weeks ago, um, where we had a yes. lot of roads here, I had a total of four yes. people that, that were saying no. leave it. Yes. Right. That, that was they were on the other side and they wanted to leave it. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's, and that's what I remember as well. And so for me, I, regardless of all those other discussions, we have a city trail that we maintain for these people to be, to, for these residents to be able to access um, their horse properties. That They've, we should maintain. No, well, we should. <laughs> that's fair. That we need that, to that, that, we, that, that is available for them to access with their horses. And they have 
there's multiple ones that have requested that we leave that access available for them since they use it. And for me, if we have residents saying, I need, you know, I, I'd like to keep the access that we've had and we've had for 20 years, we should keep it. Um, and so I under, I, look, I've been the guy, I know several of us have been the guy that has stood before this body and said, hey, I've got this huge long list of people that want something, right? I've done it, I know <laughs> Jared's done it. Like I we, can confirm that you've been the guy. Many, 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 many times, <laughs> right? So I, I get it and I understand and yeah, there's power in having multiple property owners come together, but as we sit here and look at the overall, what we've intended as a city, what we've put in our general plan, all the things that we try to identify ourselves, one of the biggest things we hear over and over and over again is our parks and trail system. And so for me to, to start dismantling it because some property owners want to move their fence, I can understand that. It's, it's, it's a valid argument. There's absolutely nothing wrong, wrong with wanting that. But we have made it a point to always protect those. That's why this is here. From the start, we have required it of the property owners. The property owner agreed to it at the time. It was an easement on the property when they purchased the land. Like it's it's in place, and, and my my opinion hasn't changed. It needs to remain in place. That's that's my two cents. If I could tell just a little story real quick about so, how you are one of those guys. Well, no, I'm just a city to the north of here that I grew up in my later years. My parents still live there. It's a half acre. We have they have a bridal path through the neighborhood, and there and it actually doesn't connect anywhere else. It's just our neighborhood. We never had horses despite, or, or large animals, despite our pleadings with our parents. My mother grew up on a farm. <laughs> we always, always thought that she would, she would let us, but what I've come to know later on is that she did not appreciate getting up before anybody else to go <laughs> milk cows. She did not want to do that, but enjoyed the space. But a lot of other neighbors did have horses, and it's great, and we walk down the trail and see them, and they have places to take them, right, which is quickly disappearing. But then I appreciate you sending the, the pictures, and I uh, took you up on the invitation to go over and look at it. I'll tell you what, I mean, the maintenance that we need to do is not much compared to the bridal paths in, in the other city. Like, this is pristine compared to, <laughs> to what we have over there and, and is a great amenity, and then looking at how it connects into the other. So I totally understand where you guys are coming from and, and your desire to, to do something more with this where you're at. But I would have to agree with my colleagues that it's an important part of everything else. And if, and if it's there, even if there's not an agreement, we, we need to take care of it for sure. So um, are, are we looking to move on with no action on this item? Is that uh, somebody looking to make a motion? Or are we just for action? For I, I, I would just take a little different argument here is that um, as the city has grown, um, characters changed in some ways. Um, we have encountered remnants or pieces of our trail system that have very limited utility. Um, not necessarily this length, but you know, pieces that were designed to be a part of a larger trail system that just have very limited utility, and we've vacated those as well. Um, now, I didn't have necessarily anybody saying, hey, I really want this 30-foot stretch of dirt between these two houses kind of thing. Um, uh, but in principle, I would just say the utility of the um, easement was kind of where our decision laid. Um, in this case, at least anecdotally from the vast majority of everyone around here, is that it's not very used. There aren't really large animals that are on it. Um, it's not, um, it, it, not even very many people walk on it. Um, it's just low utilization. And I think that um, because of the lack of use of it, um, because of the fact that there is a much larger, more robust trail system just a block over, um, that everybody has access to that connects to the to the great trails that the city has. Um, I I'm kind of leaning towards the residents who say let's vacate it because I just don't see it being that useful. Um, not saying that 
there aren't areas where we want to preserve this definitely as part of the, the city's heritage and, 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 and keep that you know, agricultural and, and animal rights where we can. And I don't think that there's anything that denies these people the right to continue to have those animals. Um, I just don't know as the city goes forward that that's gonna continue to be the use of that land, if that makes sense. So uh, I, I don't think there's necessarily a right or a wrong here by any stretch of the imagination. I just have a little bit of a different of opinion on this, so. Yeah. Um, just because um, in response to that, I would say the problem with, in my mind, the problem with vacating that is a short-term solution for a long-term for a long-term issue. I know that, the, that maybe these people right now may or may not want it, but what about the people who move in after them and once it's gone, it's gone. And I just feel like we have to preserve for a long, longer period of time than people who live there now don't, don't want it. Um, this, this guy apparently wants it. My guess is probably these guys do. So I am, um, I, I would make a motion to deny resolution number R33-2021 approving the vacation of a public course trail easement over private property. Okay, so I have a motion. Uh, do we want to have any discussion regarding that motion before I take a second? If not, was your motion to approve the deny. deny? To deny, thank you. I did not hear that first piece. So do I have a second? I'll second. Do we have any further discussion on this item? Okay, if there's no further discussion on this item, I will uh, take the vote on this. Uh, Clint? Uh, y yes. So yes would be the vote to deny. Correct. Uh, Sherry? Yes. Steve? I'm gonna vote no. <laughs> Jared? Yes. And I'll vote yes. Um, I do wanna make a comment to, to my vote. Um, look, I get it, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I've been the guy. You know, it's hard for me to look at this anecdotally. I mean, we've talked earlier today about how we have to have empirical data to make these decisions. And so making a decision on something from a anecdotal aspect, that's hard for me, right? And until I have very clear analytic data that says that it's not being used and I do have residents there that still want it, um, that's gonna sway my decision stronger. What I do believe this body would like to do, I'm gonna look at our, park, our parks director I believe that we are indicating that we would like staff to go out and make sure that there's no maintenance that needs to be done on this particular portion of the trail. Um, so that uh, we are doing our best to, to a reasonable standard. I don't know what a reasonable standard is. I don't have any horses, right? Uh, but I know that we have a lot of very experienced people on our team that do understand what's needed. And I would ask that, uh, and I think this body would ask that we would go out and uh, take a look and communicate maybe with some of these homeowners on on what we can do. I wanna make it clear that we are not making a maintenance agreement. An agreement would indicate a contract. It's part of our trail system and so we're going to try to maintain it and do what we should, but I don't want this to be construed as we are making a contract or doing anything other than maintaining property uh, that we have as a city. So um, I, I would ask staff to, to move forward with that. Do you have any questions? No, I was just gonna make a statement that we're happy to do that. We've um, recently hired an additional trails and open space team member that can help our one person that was maintaining 50 hmm. miles of trails in the city. <laughs> so um, we're working towards increasing our maintenance standards. This has been um, hit multiple times more than our other trail systems throughout the city. So we've really tried to work hard to, so to accomplish and, and like I'd say, what you're asking. I would expect that staff has a reasonable maintenance requirement and I trust staff to, to find what that is and communicate that to the residents and move forward with that standard as we would maintain any other horse trail in our community. <clears throat> not, not anymore or any less. Does any, uh, anybody else like to make a statement in regards to their vote? I think I've already communicated okay. mine. Awesome, we will move on to item 8.3, discussion consideration of approval of the reimbursement agreement with South Valley Sewer District for Hidden Oaks Backbone Phase Two sewer improvements. Blake. Okay. Um, this probably should have followed item 8.1, but next couple of items, we we'll just wanted deal to with this. Wait. Mix it up for you tonight. So just probably looking at this map is probably the, the best thing. So the sewer district, um, like we talked about earlier, the sewer to service the elementary school and the surrounding pods that will not be developed by the time the school opens. 
uh, runs down Silver Sky and then actually hits the road shown here as Gamble Oak Drive, which has recently been changed to Twisted Oak Drive. So, um, but anyway, that, that sewer, the city will reimburse the developer with the reimbursement agreement that was discussed in item 8.1. Um, that, that sewer will be constructed by the developer, reimbursed by the city, and then the city will then in turn, with this agreement, if it's approved, submit a request for reimbursement from the sewer district, which the sewer district has collected impact fees to pay for the sewer. So that's the, that's the <coughs> little three-step dance we're going through to, to make the city whole on this process. So this agreement would eventually, within this budget year, make the city whole on the cost for the sewer incurred to service the elementary school. So. And I'm guessing 8.4 is essentially the same thing as well, just in regards to power? That's correct. You want to go with that presentation right now? Yeah, why don't you give us that presentation okay. right now? If I can just add really quick, this item has been discussed at the sewer board. Um, they are adding this to their um, impact facilities plan, and, uh, and they are expecting this request from the city okay. and have given their, their nod that they would be amenable to that moving forward. So. And so there was one thing I said a second ago, should be reimbursed this year, this budget year, which is which ends <laughs> July 1, um, unless the sewer, unless for some reason the sewer district delays the check and then it would come out shortly thereafter um, because the school is scheduled to be open this August of 2022. Um, for the power, if you can see where Danzy Boulevard turns from purple to white, where it's white represents where it's existing currently. Uh, power, three-phase power does exist, I think, just along Main Street um, and, and Danzy Boulevard. They would need to run the power conduit from Main Street all the way up Danzy Boulevard, across Silver Sky, and then over to the elementary school. Uh, this, this power contract that we'll be talking about is specifically with Rocky Mountain Power. The, the cost of it is just a little bit above $800 for the, the equipment um, that would include transformers, switch gears, equipment to turn the power on and off and, and to service the school. Um, additional on that is the contract we would pay the, the cost of the power until the school opens, at which time the city would take the power out of our name and put it in the school district's name. And so we anticipate the that that might be one or two months of paying power for for this. Just be and, like power for construction? Yeah, power yes. for construction, lighting and heating, if they still need to do heating. I anticipate that'll be oh. close to summer next year, so they might not be, not be doing much heating at that time. But we're looking to participate in helping facilitate that school get open by next school year. Yep, so those are the two items, and uh, be happy to answer any questions that you might have on those. Uh, let's focus on, start with. Can I ask a clarifying question really quick? Blake, <clears throat> in some of the discussions we've had with the school district, there was at least the, <clears throat> the mention of, again, the, the temporary utilities that they're having to use during the construction. Has, has any of that discussion been factored into now what it's taking the city, obviously, to get this three-phase power in? The, the couple of months anticipated of, of having that in our name. I mean, has there been any contemplation of how those two things either offset each other or intertwine with each other as we, as we get down to the end of this project? It's a great question. We've had some discussion about us paying for the power and some of the items that the school district um, wants to be paid for um, during the construction because of agreements that were made. And I've requested that information from the school district, have yet to receive it. So we've just had just a light discussion on it and haven't gotten enough information from the school district to have further discussion. If we were responsible for the power bill, what are we looking at on that? What's the... the it was in the contract. Um, I want to say it was like a little bit over $1,300 per month, yeah. $1,351 per but month. We're not on the hook for like a $40,000 No, no, no. I've, I've discussed it with Alan and and uh, he seemed to be comfortable with yeah. it at the time. But, but to your point, Mayor, you know, when we're talking about uh, this reimbursement agreement and some of those other costs that Blake talked about in his first agreement of about $40,000 in the conduit and things of things that really we don't see a way for reimbursement for right now, I think all those are all things, obviously, mm -hmm. for discussion and consideration as we talk about that component 
of what has at least been a notion brought up by the school district at this point. Again, we want to be good partners with them, and I think we're doing, we're meeting our, we're keeping our end of the, the agreement to make sure that all of these um, key utilities are, are in in order for that school to open on, on time. That was, I know they had some deep concern and reservation about that, and we're doing what it takes to make sure that happen. Um, but again, it is a partnership in it for discussion as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go specifically to item 8.3, which is the sewer. If there's no further discussion, I accept a motion on it. I'm happy to make a motion on item 8.3, motion to approve resolution number R34-2021, approving a reimbursement agreement with South Valley Sewer District. Second. Oh. We motion a second, Sherry? Yes. Steve? Yes. Jared? Yes. Clint? Yes. I right, vote yes, that motion passes. We'll move on to 8.4, discussion consideration to enter into a contract with Rocky Mountain Power to install power infrastructure and um, electrical services for the new elementary school in the Hidden Oaks development. Uh, if there's no further discussion, I'll accept a motion. Motion to approve resolution, R, resolution number R35-2021. <laughs> Approving a reimbursement agreement with Rocky Mountain Power. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Steve and a second for Sherry. Jared? Yes. Clint? Yes. Sherry? Yes. Steve? Yes. I will vote yes. That motion passes. We'll move on to 8.5 discussion and consideration of the Hamilton well repair and redevelopment proposal. Justin? Uh oh, wrong presentation. I'll let Jonathan talk about that one. Um, while, while he's bringing this up, uh, I went into detail about kind of the existing issue that we're having with the well and the staff report. Here we'll go into some detail. If, obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, so this is about preparing and redeveloping the Hamilton well. And I'm here just kind of an overview of where it is. It's on the corner of 5600 West or Rosecrest Road and 134 South. Um, so the so the what happened to the well was it started sanding. And what that means is we started getting gravel in to the well casing itself and pumped out. Um, and so now we have to go repair that. And to do that, uh, it takes a lot of work, uh, difficult to determine exactly where those issues are. Um, so when we went through this process to determine exactly what to do, uh, we brought a consultant on board, um, then went through the uh, request for qualifications for contractors to find a good contractor to do this work. Um, and then we went through the CMGC process, which is construction management general contractor, which brings that contractor on board to help with determining what the issue is and then to solve that problem because they're the expert. We wanted them to be in, involved in that process. So as we went through that process, um, we kind of divided the project up into three phases, which I've briefly described here. Um, we've moved past the phase one, which is basically receiving a guaranteed maximum price to do the work for the repair. We're moving into phase two, and that's what this pro uh, proposal is for. And that is basically to go in and trying to determine where that failure is so that during phase three, we can go in there and actually perform the work. And the reason we did it in different phases was you don't know exactly what you're going to get into when you get down there. So we got a guaranteed price for phase two. And then once we determine exactly what it is, then it'll determine a guaranteed price for phase three. That way we're not arbitrarily paying for something they so don't have to do. So this 607,000 is just for phase two? No, it's for all of it. So what we're hoping to do now is, once we get into the process is, they gave us a maximum, or a maximum price for the whole thing, but then during the contract, they have to go back and give us another price. This is an estimate saying that when we get done with phase two to try and make this process move forward so we can get the project done <coughs> rather than have to come back again for approval, this is kind of a maximum price. If we go over this amount that's in here, then we'll come back to the council for that extra, but we feel comfortable with, with what we have here. Um, so this is kind of the phase, the cost per phase. As you can see, we're looking at around $65,000 for phase two. The estimate for phase three was just over 300,000. And then we have the general conditions, which is the contractor's overhead. And then we have 30% 30 30 contingency in this project as well because of the unknowns, right? And so it brings a total of 607,008 
83 for what we're anticipating this project will cost. What percentage so. of our water do we get from this well? This is one of our largest wells. Percentage-wise, I would say we're probably in the 10%, 15% range. So it produces about 2,000 gallons a minute. That's so. it. Justin, I, <clears throat> I don't remember seeing it, but I could have overlooked it. What, what is the age of this, this current well and the so casing that's yeah, in place? Good question. It, it seems like it, I mean, it seems like I remember when that casing went in. So uh, again, what is the age of it? When was that completed? And I guess in terms of lifespan, where do we feel like we're at with this? And is this something that is maybe normal to start to see right now? Or is this unanticipated because of a, a younger age than anticipated? Yeah. So it, it was originally drilled in 2003 and equipped in 2004. So we're approaching 20 years old. Um, this is a premature failure. We yeah. didn't anticipate this. Um, typically, you know, life for wells is somewhere around 50 years before you have to go in and start doing this type of remediation. Um, as looking at the design of this well, uh, it seems like there was some things that were overlooked. Um, Typically, when you do a well, you have a screened area where you have allows water to come in, right? Typically, you don't put a pump in the screened area, and when it was developed and the well pump was put in, it was installed in a screened area. And what happens in that area is if you have a, the pump inside the screened area, you increase velocities, which will start wearing down that well screen. Um, and typically, you'd put that in a solid cased area. Um, whether and then you'd have screen above and below which allow the water to come in so that would looks like it's a failed So part of this remedy is putting in a solid screened area so that we can re-put the pump inside that Because obviously you've got The pump at the right depth, right? So pump that much water So you would have to make modifications to that casing in order to reinforce it to, to try and prevent this from happening again at least right. Yeah, and so part That's of the fix is once we find the hole or the well where in the screen, we'd go in there and we'd repair it and put those, we basically put a sleeve inside so that that sand can't come in anymore. So we'd basically be blanking out that section anyways. We're just going to make it large enough that we can put the well back in where it goes. Okay, thank you. Do we have funds in the particular water funds to pay for this? Yeah, so, an impact so this is obviously larger than what we typically uh, budget for as far as the repair we typically budget for if we have to replace a motor or a pump or something like that um, so we have so th this will entail that we will probably need to look at some of our projects that we have budgeted for this year like some other maintenance projects to push those off uh, and then talking to Alan um, it seems like we will have enough money in our enterprise fund to cover this without much of an issue um, but we will have to tighten up our belt strings a little bit to make sure that we can <coughs> it's cover not going to drift over into the things we had done the bond for the water tanks and those things. It's not going to delay. Yeah, it shouldn't. It shouldn't can you know delve into where we can't make our debt service payments or anything like that. So, but won't um, delay any of those projects. Sorry, what was that? It won't delay any. Of no, those it won't projects. delay those projects. We may have to push off some maintenance projects or something, but uh, it shouldn't be an issue. I mean, water is one of the things I think we do a good job at in this community is making sure that we have a sustainable source of water for our residents, even if we were to have a failure um, downstream from, say, Jordan Valley Water Conservancy. We couldn't water all of our lawns, but we could at least provide some clean drinking water. And this sounds like this is a major portion of that. Um, and so, in, in my opinion, you got to have clean water. And if we, from an emergency standpoint, stand, you know, situation, having a well that pumps out 2,000 gallons a minute, um, man, that's gonna really take care of our residents. If anything, if, if we have that major earthquake and we lose access to water, and so for me, I'm, uh, you know, I don't like that it failed prematurely, and I'd like to see if we can, uh, you know, specifically in these costs, is there any conversation about a guarantee for work or how long that that guarantee? You know, well, it comes with the typical guarantees for work, uh, workmanship. Um, but I think the repair we have will, this won't happen again, right? Like I said, it was a, it was an issue with the original design. That I'd recommend we don't use that original design person. <laughs> yeah. 18 years on a well this yeah. deep, that's ridiculous. There should be some, some reimbursement on their part to us at this that's, point. That, that's where I'm also being frustrated with is the whole reason this was put in in 2003 
-hmm. One of the main reasons was to provide this access like, and this benefit, this long-term solution. Yeah. This yeah. is not as long-term as it should have been. So, but. Was there a, put up some kind of a bond for that? <laughs> well, that expired a long time ago. <laughs> 18 years ago, I don't think you'd have any luck going back on that. Yeah. Uh, so if there's no further discussion on this item, I'd be happy to accept the motion on this. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the proposal received from VanCon in the amount of $607,883 to repair and redevelop the Hamilton well. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Um, Sherry? Yes. Steve? Yes. Jared? Yes. Clint? Yes. I'll vote yes to that motion passes. Move on to uh, item 8.6, consideration of multiple reimbursement agreements. Jonathan. Oh yeah, we always have to have Jonathan at one of our meetings. All righty, we have four reimbursement agreements for council's consideration tonight. Um, two of which are from the reserves at Sky Ranch, and the other two from Sky Haven, shown in the vicinity map here. On the reserves at Sky Ranch, um, there are, so there, I'm gonna first take your attention to the intersection, it's kind of highlighted in uh, red. There's some striping and some additional pavement on the um, eastbound lane, right-hand turn lane, where there's some additional shoulder that is needed for that intersection improvement that is impact be eligible. Um, and then there's a, an upsize from a six inch line to an eight inch line along 134th. Um, and those improvements, uh, excuse me, the, we intend to and the reimbursement agreement uh, is intended that we reimburse them upon completion for the upsize from the six inch to the eight and then the reimbursement for the transportation impact fee fund would be as we receive those um, or as we collect those when the develop or the excuse me the building permits come in um, and I might make a clarification that the, um, the the funds from the upsize from six to eight inch is not water impact be eligible but rather water enterprise so you can sign and see by the pin number it's the we stands for water enterprise so that's not something that we collect at a building permit, um, it's, again, it's a water enterprise. That's something thing. extra we're asking. What's the cost right on the upsize? Thirty-five thousand seven hundred. It looks like the so the upsize so that the effort to install that is one hundred seventeen thousand three hundred thirty-one. So that's an existing line that exists. It's an existing six, and the requirement upsize that that is the cost of the upsize. One hundred seventeen. Yeah. Oh, to top it down. Gotcha. Before I go that, to the next that's one. something that we're asking them to do, right, is to make it bigger than what it was Correct. or what they would have to do. When they hit it. They, they, like they hydraulically do not require or necessitate the upsize for that line. That is a, 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 an improvement for the city um, that we have and, and need to do. But we saw an opportunity to take advantage of that now because the development's coming in. They'll be improving the roadway, and we'd prefer to get that in before the asphalt gets laid down. And that's why you're only doing the section that fronts, obviously, their Correct. development there. There's an additional 100 feet to the west, west. still needs to get completed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we prefer it to go in before the asphalt. Yeah. If, instead of cutting new roads, good idea. Correct. And then Sky Haven Development, the, the polygon, and that's the, the red line, is the actual footprint of the development for Sky Haven development. Um, they have access to their project by means of future 7300 West Extension, which we are planning to name Rose Basin Road. At least that's what's been proposed. That's not solid in stone yeah, yet. I'm we don't, not changing my address again. 7300 <laughs> West is great. Yeah, we, and we could do that, so that, I, I got you distracted. That one was my fault. Why? why? why did you Jonathan, you should have known better. I know, I should not have done that. So we'll come back later on that item. Um, so their access will be off that road in gray. <laughs> and so they, uh, we have told them that, or excuse me, the, the reimbursement agreement for that particular one again would be mm -hmm. upon receipt of the uh, roadway impact fees for the building permits. 
for that project only. Um, the cost for the roadway that is eligible for impact uh, exceeds that which, they are, which this reimbursement agreement is set up for. And then again, the blue line, that is not a water impact fee project, but rather a water enterprise project. Again, that one would be reimbursed at substantial completion and acceptance of that water line. Any questions on those two? Okay. Other than the name of the road. Yeah. I'm not, I don't want to change my address again. I already did it once. I have never moved. Uh, no, it feels like twice. we're bullying you a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so th and this summarizes again the cost uh, and the PIN number associated with each reimbursement agreement. Um, the recommendation here would be that we approve all, but the alternative could be any combination of approval or disapproval on the proposed for. Um, and if time, I wanted to have a quick chat about procedurally how the council would prefer we come to you on these reimbursement agreements. I think mm -hmm. that actually might be a better discussion. We're about six weeks from now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, just, I'll just say, generally Seven. speaking, I mean, all of these make sense for all, for all those reasons, and I completely understand. Nathan's kind of explained the reasoning for you guys bringing these to us now. Yep. Um, the only question with each of them as they come in is going to be, okay, well, it's easy to see the cost and the need for those, but how does that match up to where they're coming from, where the revenues are from, and our concern of exceeding our obligations sort of thing. So however that's brought back next time, maybe just include that piece of it. Because I just saw a lot of funds. Because it's easy for us to nod when these come up today. and say, yeah, we need them. Yeah. I, a million bucks. In, in terms of feedback, I think, to the to all the staff is, um, and when we had this discussion in our last meeting, um, was that uh, a financial analysis of, of some of these things in terms of where the money's coming from, what fund, how much it decreases that, whether or not there's a surplus or there's sufficient amount to cover those expenses. Um, even you know with this trail thing, the decision we made tonight, we don't understand how much the ongoing maintenance and, oh, yeah. and it's going to cost the, the city. Right? There's a, there's a there's a financial aspect of all of these decisions that just aren't being readily, I guess, fully vetted out in at least to the council's presentation. And it's it's really easy. You put in the staff report. Here it is. Blah blah. blah. It doesn't have to be robust. But um, I think that's something we could benefit from in all of our all of these discussions. And, and I think in t to fully acknowledge that. I don't think we can expect of, it, of any of you to pinpoint exactly where that dollar and cent is going to come from sure. in the budget when we're talking about impact fees. But you know, Nathan's reference, kind of that five-year plan, can we know kind of some of these major things and where the collections are, et cetera. Like, how does it fit into that plan? You know, has it bumped something else? These are extra things that the city is requesting for good reasons. But what's, what's the opportunity cost for us on the next one? Does that make sense? A, a bigger picture, essentially. Yeah. yeah. The only question I have is really back to the philosophy of reimbursement agreements. These are maximum amounts that are that are listed here. Those would be not to exceed values. Thank you. And of perfect. course, we would require um, invoices of actual costs prior to reimbursement. It's almost like we're getting smarter at this. <laughs> well, Jonathan makes a good point. I just want to reemphasize is that our agreements now say we only will reimburse you up to this amount if you give us actual invoices of the actual cost to that yeah. right. 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 So there's a chance they get paid Correct. less than yeah. authorized under the agreement. This is the maximum amount, but they can only prove that they spent 115 like Correct. Thousand, right? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Like I said, okay. it's taking us some time, but we're getting smarter at this. Um, any further discussion on these items before I accept a motion? Nope. Okay, accept a motion. Motion to approve resolution number R36-2021, approving reimbursement agreements. Second. Okay, motion is second. Clint. Yes. Sherry. Yes. Steve. Yes. Jared. Yes. I'll vote yes, that motion passes. We'll move on to the public hearing portion of our meeting. Uh, we, it looks like we have um, one item for public hearing. Uh, that is 9.1, public hearing consideration of a resolution approving amendment of the Harriman City Fiscal year 2021-2022 budget. Alan. Okay. <laughs> Over the last uh, essentially four months, there's been discussion of a budget amendment of different 
kinds of budget amendments at just every meeting we've had since. <laughs> we wanted to have them all at once, so we've been accumulating all of them that they've come and talked to you about. And all of the things you've just agreed to <laughs> are the things that we're now going to talk to you in the budget. Um, I was originally rid, uh, scheduled to be on the budget or on the agenda first tonight, but then you would have been approving the budget before you approved all these agreements. So we weren't sure which <laughs> way would be the best, but we decided uh, we would. Uh, look That's right. At I just told Chase if we put the public con or the public hearing at the very end, then the public leaves. And yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> they do when it's Strategy. budget anyhow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, yeah, you're assuming that that's what they were here for. <laughs> but, you know, there was a lot of discussion of whether this should be before the agreements you just did or after, but um, kind of thought that if you're going to approve the agreements, then we would have to do the budget. I think this so. is good so we don't have to have another meeting where we approve right. all the things we just did. Okay. Right. So, so the budget. <laughs> So, as I said, you know, clear back in August, the issue came up of needing to do the uh, ivory homes. Then we've had um, uh, Jonathan has come back to us with a couple of changes we need to make as far as uh, the way we want to restructure some of the, the budget in, in parks and in uh, our capital projects. And we've had some requests from other departments for some budget items, and we've talked about them all. We went through all of them last week, but okay. So this week we'll give you as much information as you want, but we'll go through the, the PowerPoint of it and, and answer as many questions as, as you have. But like I say, this is an accumulation of all the budget amendment issues we've talked about in work meeting going clear back to the middle of August. <clears throat> First of all, this is a little different than what we gave you before because we are, this is the MDA for Hidden Oaks because we, as Blake said in his presentation, we are responsible for putting it all out front and then we will get a refund of 1422000 when they start their two phases that, that he referred to, okay? And when we look at the, the transportation impact fees, these are the things that have been requested. There's a reimbursement agreement for scenic development, a reimbursement agreement for Monarch, Monarch Village, and then there's the Hidden Oaks amount that are all eligible for impact fees transportation impact fees. We also had two reimbursement agreements from Stormwater. One was from Range East uh, for 50000 And wasn't that a reimbursement of Fee and Lou? Okay. Okay. And then there was the uh, Harriman 73 Partners. This is Stormwater that's going down and down at the Auto Mall. Then we had some park impact fee uh, first of all, again, we have Hidden Oaks of 70216 We have the feasibility study for the uh, um, arts facility. And then we have the Juniper Canyon Recreation Area of 700000 The grant, <clears throat> there is a grant of 700000 for the uh, uh, Juniper Canyon, which is coming through the um, actually two sources, the largest share coming from Salt Lake, Salt Lake County. Um, and I did neglect in my PowerPoint to put it, but there is also a $70,000 donation coming for the arts facility, which has already been received, by the way. So uh, we have that. So we do need to... to uh, it is in the staff report, but I left it off of the PowerPoint. So we do have 770000 coming in grants at this point for this. Okay, then <clears throat> Jonathan had come to you and 
had some changes in the ways that we wanted to budget the park impact fee, and this is because of when he came to you with um, priorities, uh, this would change the way the budget's done. Now, um, one thing to, to point out in this, um, this uh, slide is the second item down in the expenditures, White Hollow Trailhead. Um, in the original budget, this was 800,000. In the proposal from our last meeting, this was 900,000. I've increased it to a million two because the bid we got was a million two. Now, if you don't wanna increase that, we didn't bring the contract today because there's some questions on it, but I, when I put this together, it was still on the agenda for tonight's meeting, so I thought, if we're gonna be looking at approving the contract for that amount, it should be in the budget for that amount. So that's an item of question at this point. And uh, so in what you looked at last week, uh, this reallocation of, of funds actually resulted in a negative 70,000. Well, if we do put that increase for White Hollow Trailhead in here, it's an increase over our previous budget of 230,000. So just uh, one issue there. Okay, uh, water impact fees again. This is Hidden Oaks and it's 677,000. <clears throat> uh, general capital projects. Now, when I prepared this presentation, as you remember, we were going to have to spend $400,000 for sewer and $300,000 for electrical. And you saw tonight, we still have the $400,000 for the sewer, which will be reimbursed, but now we only have a few thousand minimal, so that, uh, that $700,000 can be dropped by the $300,000 of our electrical. <clears throat> Range East, um, Remind me. That was the PMU and the one that okay. The, uh, okay, that's right. Okay, the other one was McHouston Road. This is the fee and loan uh, reimbursement. Okay, also, Jonathan has gone through, uh, and these are the numbers exactly as we shared them with you at the last meeting. You looked at what we approved in our original budget, has amended that to what you uh, expressed were your priorities when he met with you about this. So this, uh, and mainly it's, it's fairly close. Uh, the big change is in Gina Road um, because it's not likely to happen this year. So, um, so this is just, changing our original budget to what we expect is going to ha happen this year based on your priorities. <clears throat> okay, this is another item we talked about two meetings ago, is that we uh, wanted to budget the entirety of the new bond to upgrade Main, Main Street. So that is taking the entirety of the bond coming in and budgeting it to be spent on, on the Main Street project. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, then we had a couple of uh, smaller general fund items here. We talked about a clerk in the, uh, in the court that we need because of the increased court services, including having to do all of our meetings virtually now as well as live. Um, so we would be looking at for the remainder of this year, a cost of about $56,000 in wages and burden for this person. But because of the way we've changed the, the bailiff, we would save about 21,000. So. Uh, we're looking at about 33,000 total for the, uh, for the new court clerk. 
And the other item was the $5,000 that was requested last week as the uh, seed money for the 501C3 for the arts and cultural uh, organization. So then as we look at the transportation, we currently have 638,000 in, in transportation impact fees. Uh, we project revenue this year of 2,042,000 and we already have budget at 2,576. So that only leaves us $104,000. And we're budgeting in this budget amendment uh, 104 for scenic development, 200,400 for Monarch Villages, and the Hidden Oaks portion of the roads is 2.8 million. Okay, so that actually puts our road impact fee in the negative of 3,048,000. Now we are anticipating being repaid of this amount, 1,432,000. So it leaves us a, a negative of 1,600,000, um, which we'll see in a minute how I'm proposing that we deal with that. Uh, the storm drain, if we look at the storm drain impact fund, it currently has 2,475. We are budgeting a revenue of 339,000 this year we're projecting expenditures of 329, leaving a balance of 2,485. So then if we add these, uh, these uh, budget amendments in, we would be spending 50,000 for Range East and 213,000 for Airman 73 Partners, leaving a balance in stormwater of 2,221,855. So that one's in good shape. Park, um, we're by, we have a current balance in our park impact fee of 5,286,000. Uh, we project revenues this year of 2,346,000. Uh, projected expenditures are 4,713,000. <clears> so as, as we talked earlier, there is, are two grants expected. There's 70,000 in a contribution from a, a local individual, and there's a grant of 700,000 coming from two government agencies. We then have expenditures, the Hidden Row Oaks portion of parks is 70,216. The arts facility cost is 70,000. Juniper Canyon would be budgeted for 700,000, and the realignment of the park's expenses would be 230, and that is if we agree with the Wide Hollow Trail change that I made. Leaving us in parks a balance of 2,619,000. Now, we could go ahead and approve this the way it is now, and it would put that amount on White Hollow, but that does not allow them to spend it unless they come back and get your permission to move forward. So however you want to do, we can take it out or we could approve it that way, but it will require them coming back for approval of the contracts. Okay, now if we look at the general fund capital projects, Currently, we have a negative balance in this fund of 7,250,000. Now, keep in mind, we've borrowed 12,500,000, so there's positive cash of about $5 million, but it doesn't affect fund balance. So I've got to show that the way it is, but I'll explain it to you so that we understand. Projected revenue this year of 5,876,000, projected expenditures of 4,935,000, leaving six, a negative 6,310,000. So with our 12,5, that leaves us 6,200,000 we can expend. Now, now, as we look at the projected revenue in this, this fund, we'll get the sewer money back in this budget year for sure of 406,771. 
the Ivory Homes reimbursement may be this year, but it may be in the fall as well. So, but it's in there so that we've got a place marker of where we're at at this point. Our expenditures, we'd have 406,771 for Hidden Oaks, Range East uh, Fee and Lou, 40,000. Road impact fee deficit. This is the deficit we created when we paid the Hidden Oaks in, in the previous slide of 3046000 And then the change in the, the alignment of the expenses that Jonathan's put together would also reduce these expenditures by 980000 So the total net expenditures would be 2514 leaving us with a negative balance of 6995000 So we'd have about $5.5 million of the borrowed money still there. As you remember, we're trying to pay that down, so we're a little bit down, but we, we'd use some of it here. So, um, and then, of course, water impact fees. Now, we got 21000 in this fund. <coughs> Projected revenues million seven. Project expenditures are twenty million two seventy seven, and those are mainly coming. A lot of this balance is from the bond, and a lot of these projects are from the bond. So, after paying the Hidden Oaks, we should have about two and a half million dollars left in the water fund. So, I guess if you have any questions, I'd try to answer whatever <coughs> questions you would have. Thank you, appreciate that. Uh, we will go ahead and move uh, to our, to open the public hearing. And if there's any individuals that are here that would like to speak towards this item, please come up, so state your name and do so at this time. Seeing none, I will accept a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. <coughs> second. Motion and second, Jared. Yes. All right, sorry, this one's all in favor. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, so next item, uh, so we also can accept a motion to approve or to deny. I guess the only follow-up question I have would go back to the wide tra uh, hollow trailhead. And again, I guess just look for a little clarification. So we have 800,000 in there. Yes. The last bid was 900,000. But Jonathan's the, last estimate was 900, but when we actually got the but the, the contract bids, is for 1.2. Yeah, well, yeah, but that hasn't been accepted. Right, it was on the agenda for tonight, but additional discussion was needed, so it was pulled off. But it was after I had put this change, <laughs> and it may be well that you decide a little bit what you want to do here, rather than having to come back for another budget amendment, if. You and Chen. Uh, I guess I'll look to it either either Jonathan or Wendy who wants to provide a little more context. <laughs> I, I, I will say I, I actually pulled it because it, it I received it very late and I had numerous questions and there wasn't time to answer those questions prior to bringing it to council. Uh, some of it in regards to how you asked how are we paying for it. Um, the so it will come back. It's an expensive project, um, and you'll have to decide if you want to do it or not. It's, um, I don't think any, anybody's estimating is coming anywhere close at the moment. Um, but uh, so I, it's not on your agenda because it, I got it Thursday afternoon. We're trying to publish it that day, and I, I didn't have time to get my questions answered, so I had them pull it. But we could earmark the money. And, and with the full understanding that if we don't like, it, we feel like it needs to be substantially less, we can. Correct. You you still can have. Can I decide on the contract? If, if you uh, approve this, it doesn't approve that contract. You're still, that's a separate. The contract still has to come back. Okay. <clears throat> the, the, the contract will come back to you at the next meeting. Correct. And you would still be able to approve or disapprove the contract. This would just be your marking the money in at this point. And you know, if you don't want to do that, we could wait till the contract's approved and then we could hold another public hearing and, and change the budget if, if we'd rather do that. Anything you... 
either. <laughs> I don't know if there's an, a whole lot more additional insight that I can give other than what has been explained that it is correct. The original budget based on construction drawing estimates from an engineer was 800,000 was the original number. And then we didn't go to bid right away. And the engineer said, hey, we're getting some additional costs. We think it's going to be higher. No changes in design. We think it's $900,000, right? And then we received the bids, come in 1.2. We, to, to Nathan's point, we are struggling to nail down what costs are right now, and they're continuing to, to increase and more and more difficult to, to estimate. So that's probably the, I don't know. I, Supply chain issues, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. The sides are on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> My only question is in regards to the, the road bond money, and I apologize to everyone because I missed the big discussion on that, but why are we allocating that all to Main Street? We had a very lengthy uh, discussion regarding that. I know we're trying, there's, it was mentioned helping with Hidden Oaks and some other projects and things, but I, I, I cannot vote for something that ignores the, all the failing roads. I mean, especially in my district, they've gone on forever and ever, and there just won't be money from other sources to, to take care of those, uh, unless there's... I think I could sum it up, at least from my perspective, is there are opportunities for us to be able to come up with million, two million, three million dollar projects in the future. There's not another opportunity in our budget to come up with ten and a half million increasing to ever accomplish that project at yeah. once. And that was basically the argument is that we'll never be able to tackle something this big without the bond. That's about what it boils down to. <clears throat> well said. We still got other roads we got to pay for, but yeah. And we did, we we had the very long discussion on whether we should do exactly what you're talking about is knock out a bunch of little roads or do the really big road mm -hmm. that's the main road in our city. So that was the discussion that was had and read that, and that was the direction given to staff by the body. Yep. So any further discussion on this item? There's not. I'm willing to accept a motion. We already did. We already did. did. Closed, it. closed it. And I moved up. We're ready for action item number two. I'm going to make a motion to approve resolution R36 2021, approving an amendment to the 2021 2022 Harriman City fiscal year budget. Second. I have a motion and a second. Jared? No, just with that comment. Clint? Yes. Sherry? Yes. Steve? Yes. I know, but yes, that motion passes. That brings us to the end of our regularly scheduled general meeting. Um, we do have quite a few items coming up uh, that we want the public to be aware of. First is November 16th, which is the Board of Canvassers meeting. Uh, that is at 5, uh, 5 p.m. Um, we have the next Planning Commission, which will be uh, on November 18th at 7 p.m. Our next City Council meeting will not be until December 8th. At uh, The work meeting will start at 5.30, and the City Council general meeting will start at 7 p.m. Uh, please be uh, note that we will uh, have our offices closed on uh, uh, Veterans Day, which is tomorrow. Uh, we will also have a Veterans Day flag ceremony at City Hall at 9 a.m. And we do have uh, the holiday market at Butterfield Park on November 19th and 20th. Miss Harriman Scholarship Pageant will be at Fort Harriman Middle School on November 20th, and then obviously uh, on the uh, we have Thanksgiving coming up as well. On November 25th and 26th, Harriman City offices will be closed for that day. We do also have uh, November 19th through December, uh, we do have the Harriman Winter Window Walk. This is a, a program that we're starting this year. It's an opportunity for our businesses to uh, dress up the windows of their, of their, uh, of their locations, uh, and uh, there'll be a little contest in regards to, um, you know, prizes on who does the best job for some different, uh, uh, different categories, public choice, best Harriman feel, most women's goal, most elegant, best use of small space. Uh, we'd invite our businesses to participate. Applications are due November 19th. Um, the decorating deadline will be December 3rd, and then between December 3rd and 24th, we will invite our community to go shop at those local businesses. Um, if there's any questions, please reach out to the city, and we'd be happy to uh, get you more information regarding that. Uh, our, our residents can actually shop there before just those dates. We only, just we only want them shopping during Christmas. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. 
Uh, we would love, uh, love any participation we have at, at helping our local businesses. Uh, we move, we'll move into a closed session. Uh, for Mr. The, Mayor, yes. if, if I might just have one quick moment. I neglected to mention something earlier in the meeting, if I might have just 90 seconds. Go for it. Um, I had the chance to meet our new bailiff, Nicole, is that right? Natalie, is that right? Natalie, excuse me. Um, she might be the toughest human being I have ever <laughs> met. Uh, <laughs> I had the privilege <laughs> of watching her get pepper sprayed. Um, and she barely made a whimper or a sound. She was just like, wow, that really hurts. And all of the seasoned male officers standing around were like, I would be on the ground crying like a baby, rolling around. She is awesome. I'm just so glad. I, I hope her. that was just, in the course of a training that she was pepper Yeah, it was, it, was oh, part okay. of it was awesome. I could not believe how tough she was. Anyway, good hire. That's going to be a good bailiff. <laughs> yeah, I understand too. <laughs> She's incredible. Anyway, good hire, Chief. All right, uh, we will be moving into a closed session for those of the members of the public that are present. Uh, we will not have any further business after the closed session, so we will not uh, restart our stream, um, and uh, we will have no further action after we, we come back from that other than to close the meeting. Um, with that, I'll accept a motion to go into closed session. Um. Motion to temporarily recess the city council meeting to convene in closed session for the purpose to discuss the character, professional competence, or physical or mental health of an individual pending or reasonable limited, imminent litigation and the purchase exchange of, wow, and the purchase exchange or lease of real property as provided by Utah Code Annotated Section 52-4-205. Okay. I'll second. Motion to second, Jared. Sorry, just a question on, I was just asking Chase, sorry for the sidebar, but I was just asking if there's anything particular with the character professional competence, because we usually don't include that unless- Yes, there is something specific. specific. Yes. We usually get a little bit of a heads up ahead. And uh, we, I was, I informed Councilmember Orrin, unfortunately you have not been here at any of those meetings and we were trying not to do that on, on record without uh, going into or a closed phone meeting call first. or anything. So you're, we're, we're, we've called for the vote. Jared? Sure. Okay, Clint? Yes. Okay, Sherry? Yes. Steve? I'll vote yes, but I'd like to make a comment. Okay, and I'll vote yes. That motion passes, Steve. Okay. Um, in, in reference to the um, uh, first part of the, the motion and Jared's question, um, I, I voted for that discussion to move forward. And, and agreed with the other council members here to have that discussion. Um, I still stand by my vote, and that's why I'm voting for this part of the closed session. Um, but I, I, I do think there may be some discussion to be had before we have that in our closed meeting. I would just say that um, I have some reservations about maybe the tone of that discussion, so. Okay, we have moved to the closed session. Thank you very much.